Hello, beautiful souls. Oh, how glad I am that I'm back doing these course lessons. <laughs> it feels so good to read them every day. So thank you everybody for your presence along this path of awakening. So today we jump right into lesson 152. This has been a powerful thought slash lesson that I have referenced many times over the years. So I'm grateful to be reading it again and sitting with it. So it is the power of decision is my own. The power of decision is my own. So here we are. Wow, here we are. No one can suffer loss unless it be his own decision. No one suffers pain except his choice elects this state for him. No one can grieve nor fear, nor think him sick, unless these are the outcomes that he wants. And no one dies without his own consent. Nothing occurs but represents your wish, and nothing is omitted that you choose. Here is your world, complete in all details. Here is its whole reality for you. And it is only here that salvation is. Bam! Right? Salvation comes from me, remember. The power of decision is my own. We are deciding for fear or for love. So, the choice for fear and separation has resulted in our world, so Jesus reminds us here so clearly. So here we go. You may believe that this position is extreme, and too inclusive to be true. Yet can truth have exceptions? If you have the gift of everything, can loss be real? Can either pain be part of peace or grief of joy? Can fear and sickness enter in a mind where love and perfect holiness abide? Truth must be all-inclusive if it be the truth at all. Accept no opposite and no exceptions, for to do so is to contradict the truth entirely. This is the whole point. Truth, salvation, is whole. It is all-inclusive, and it is the same for everyone everywhere. It is a decision of the mind. It is a choice that we make whether we believe in separation or unity, fear or love. It is that simple. Exactly, one of my favorite lines. Salvation is the recognition that truth is true and nothing else is true. Salvation is the recognition that truth is true and nothing else is true. This you have heard before, but may not yet accept both parts of it. Without the first, the second has no meaning. But without the second, is the first no longer true. Truth cannot have an opposite. Truth cannot have an opposite. This cannot be too often said and thought about. For if what is not true is true as well as what is true, then part of truth is false and truth has lost its meaning. Nothing but the truth is true and what is false is false. Again, there is no gray area. It is black and white. It is truth and illusions. That's all. This is the simplest of distinctions, yet the most obscure. But not because it is a difficult distinction to perceive. It is concealed behind a vast array of choices which do not appear to be entirely your own. And thus the truth appears to have some aspects that belly consistency, but do not seem to be but contradictions introduced by you. That's the thing. We make these contradictions and these choices and make these conclusions in our minds that literally is the veil for us thinking that we didn't make these choices, that we do not have the power of decision, which in fact we do. As God created you, you must remain unchangeable with transistory states by definition false. Let me read that again. As God created you, 
you must remain unchangeable with transistory states by definition false. Any transistory states are still within the realm of perception, therefore are still within the realm of illusion, right? We are here moving out of perception to knowledge, which is where God is, which there is no transistory state. It just is. It is the isness. It is the beingness. Hmm. <laughs> Hello? Did you guys knock? What's up? That's okay. I make you video. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Okay, he'll do it. <laughs> he'll switch the laundry. That's okay. Thank you, babe. Thank you, Tabs. Love you guys. Laundry. Good. <laughs> As God created you, you must remain unchangeable with transistory states by definition false. And that includes all shifts in feeling, alterations in condition of the body and the mind, in all awareness and in all response. This is the all-inclusiveness which sets the truth apart from falsehood and the false kept separate from the truth as what it is. Amen. Right? He's saying that by believing in these transistory states and, you know, all these shifts and feelings and, and all of these things, by believing that these are real is literally just the veil. That's what keeps the truth separate from us. Right? Because truth is whole. Truth doesn't change. Truth is always the same. But it is our thoughts about it that change. And it is these thoughts that must be transformed, right? Forgiven in order for us to see the truth. So this is great awareness here today. Is it not strange that you believe to think you made the world you see is arrogance? God made it not. Of this you can be sure. What can he know of the ephraimal, the sinful, and the guilty, the afraid, the suffering, and lonely, and the mind that lives within a body that must die? You but accuse him of insanity, to think he made a world where such things seem to have reality. He is not mad. He is not mad. Yet only madness makes a world like this. This is where our power is again. We are the creators of this world, not God. God created us as souls. We created this world, right? So this is, this is the biggest distinction here. Ha. To think that God made chaos contradicts his will, invented opposites to truth, and suffers death to triumph over life. All this is arrogance. Humility would see at once these things are not of him. And can you see what God created not? To think you can is merely to believe you can perceive what God willed not to be. And what could be more arrogant than this? See, we're even having the word arrogance be reinterpreted here. <laughs> by realizing that it is not arrogant to think that we are the ones who created the world, but to think that we can perceive a will that is part from God is arrogant. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Let us today be humble and accept what we have made as what it is. The power of decision is our own. Decide but to accept your rightful place as co-creator of the universe, and all you think you made will disappear. What rises to awareness, then, will be all that there ever was, eternally as it is now. And it will take the place of self-deceptions made but to usurp the altar to the Father and the Son. So by accepting the simple truth that the power of decision is my own is how all of our falsities fade away and are removed. Because up until that point, we are usurping the throne of God by putting ourselves there <laughs> and realizing that it is God and us as an extension of him. But when we are perceiving ourselves as separate, so are we standing in our own way. So today, we practice true humility. Abandoning the false pretense by which the ego seeks to prove it arrogant. Only the ego can be arrogant. It's important to point out. It is only the ego that can be arrogant. It is only the ego that chooses a separate will. Not our true self. 
But truth is humble in acknowledging its mightiness, its changelessness, and its eternal wholeness, all-encompassing God's perfect gift to his beloved son. Hmm. We lay aside the arrogance which says that we are sinners, guilty and afraid, ashamed of what we are, and lift our hearts in true humility instead to him who has created us immaculate, like himself, in power and in love. The power of decision is our own. And we accept of him that which we are and humbly recognize the Son of God. So we accept humbly what we are and humbly recognize the Son of God, which is what we are. To recognize God's Son implies as well that all self-concepts have been laid aside and recognized as false. Indeed, indeed, all false concepts, all false self-concepts must be laid aside and recognized as false. Their arrogance has been perceived. And in humility, the radiance of God's Son, His gentleness, His perfect sinlessness, His Father's love, His right to heaven, and released from hell, are joyously accepted as our own. Now do we join in glad acknowledgement that lies are false and only truth is true. Now we can be happy in this truth that we are entitled to our Father's perfect love, the right to heaven, our sinlessness, our guiltlessness, when we recognize that we are God's Son, by thinking we're anything but God's Son is what arrogance is. We think of truth alone as we arise and spend five minutes practicing its ways, encouraging our frightened minds with this. The power of decision is my own. This day I will accept myself as what my Father's will created me to be. This day I will accept myself as what my Father's will created me to be. Amen. Then we will wait in silence, giving up all self-deceptions as we humbly ask ourself that he reveal himself to us. And he who never left will come again to our awareness, grateful to restore his home to God as it was meant to be. Impatience. Wait for him throughout the day and hourly invite him with the words with which the day began, concluding it with the same invitation to yourself. God's voice will answer. For he speaks for you and for your father. He will substitute the peace of God for all your frantic thoughts, the truth of God for self-deceptions, and God's son for your illusions of yourself. So there's nothing else that we can say except thank you, God, that the truth is true. <laughs> so I love you, beautiful souls. Enjoy today's powerful, powerful lesson of reminding us that the power of decision is my own. Thank you, God, that truth is true. Bye, everybody.